themselves. Again, if you go to products under APIs, each of our APIs has details of what the API is. It also is going to list out the different features and capabilities of what you can do with the API. Uh, and as you get down to it, you're going to find code samples. So if you're saying, I want code in JavaScript or Python or PHP or Java, C Sharp, Ruby, uh, it's a simple, I'm a PHP guy, clicking on this, and I can see how to do this. And I can actually click build my free voice app right here. And it's going to take me through the game starter guide and doing that. So how difficult is it to actually build the application on a via cloud office? Well, again, if you go to uh, resources or you click that button, you can go to getting started. If I want to create a uh, app that connects two voice numbers together, so it makes a phone call that connects two different phone numbers, uh, that's really as simple as clicking on that link, scrolling down to create an app. I click this button, it creates the application for me. I don't worry about what permissions I need or, or what type of app it should be. And then I simply just select the language that I want. So if I want PHP, uh, I can go down here, it's going to walk me through how to install Composer if I don't have Composer already, how to install the Ring Central uh, SDK. And then all I have to do is copy and paste this code snippet here, uh, enter my credentials, and just like that, I now have a voice call. So very quick and easy to build uh, using the Avaya Cloud Office platform. You're also going to find a fully uh, uh, defined API reference. So if you want to try out making calls, if you want to understand the query parameters, see what the capabilities are, this is as simple as, again, going to resources, API reference. And here you can see we have the Ringo API reference where I can sign into my account and actually try making calls through the API. If I adjust these, uh, this data here, uh, you'll notice on the right, it's actually gonna adjust uh, the information. And of course, I can see the example request response bodies and go through that. We also provide several SDKs, so you don't have to worry about using things like boundaries and curl. So if you want to get started very quickly using our SDKs, we have official SDKs for uh, .NET or C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, uh, PHP, Ruby, iOS. And then we also have a WebRTC library if you want to do voice and video over uh, the web. But if you're like, you know what, this is great, but I'm a cold fusion person. We actually have a whole bunch of community generated SDKs. So you have cold fusion, go and numerous others that you can use. Now, I know what you're saying, this is great, but what happens if I have questions? What happens if I get stuck or you know, I need some help? Uh, one of the amazing things about the Avaya Cloud Office uh, platform and the Ring Central platform is the amazing developer community. This means that you can go to our community page and you can join our live chat and get help from uh, fellow developers or our support team. You can, uh, that, that's a shameless plug with my, my photo there. Uh, you can tweet at Ring Central Devs and we'll support you in Ring Central Devs. You can file tickets in uh, you know, GitHub if, there, if you find issues. We also have a full developer forum where you can post your questions in the developer forum and get responses both from our support team and from your peers. And of course, if you're like, you know, but this is a hackathon. I don't want to give away what I'm doing. I don't want you to know, share this, this code and give other people the idea. You can also take advantage of our free tier one developer support. That means that you can file a support ticket with our developer support team and they'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you build your application. Uh, as Billy Mays likes to say, but wait, there's more. So this is my infomercial of the day. Uh, we also want to draw your attention to the Game Changer program. As you do the hackathon, you can join the Game Changer program, learn more about the Avaya Cloud Office platform and the APIs. And as you do that, you'll earn points. Those points can be traded in things for uh, my personal favorite swag, but other things like, you know, an Echo, since we had Alexa on earlier, uh, iPads, uh, Nintendo Switches, MacBook Pros, even conference passes and software. So all available to you. Uh, and least but not least, the, the, the real kicker is you know, once you build the app, you will have the opportunity to submit your app to the App Gallery, the Avaya Cloud Office App Gallery, where your app will be in front of over 400,000 plus customers, you know, available to, to Ring Central customers, available to Avaya Cloud Office customers, and more. So a good chance to really get your app and get it out there. Uh, so that's my quick spiel. Uh, Try to do it fairly quickly for you, Alan. I think I took like 40 minutes this morning, uh, but happy to answer any questions. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Mike. Do we have any questions from the uh, audience on uh, the resources Mike has shared? One question that pops up quite often, Mike, is I've run out of minutes. Um, how do people get more minutes or more tokens or uh, more messages into their account? That's the, the crazy weird thing about the the API platform with the Vi Cloud Office and Ring Central is that we're not going to limit you. So you basically get unlimited minutes, unlimited messages. You're in a sandbox environment. Uh, the, the caveat is it's watermark, so it'll say powered by you know Ring Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only time you might get limited is with voice minutes, in which yeah. case you just send a ticket to support and say, "Hey guys, give me more minutes." Uh, and if they say no, you say, "Mike told me to give me more minutes," uh, and then they'll give you more minutes. 
Excellent. That's the most important thing. Mike told me. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get myself in trouble here. <laughs> no, that's great. Thanks so much, Mike. Any questions from the... Oh, we have a chat pop up here. Um, so the question here is from Doc Green. And the question is, Doug, does Ring Central integrate with all of Avaya Cloud Office? It does. So Avaya Cloud Office is, is you know, officially powered by Ring Central. So everything that you can do with the APIs that, that we provide were designed specifically for Avaya Cloud Office to allow you to, to manage those capabilities. The only capability that uh, is really going to be limited is SMS outside of North America. So if you're you know, in the UK, uh, SMS is currently not available, but within North America, that, that feature is. Understood. Uh, then there's a question from uh, Nick. W will there be some folks uh, from Avaya Ring Central on the Riot chat system? So will it just be your support here? Or because yeah, with TedHack, we also have like a, um, a Riot room because uh, we run on sort of matrix for chat. So there's a lot of general TedHack chat there. Will there be somebody on the uh, Riot uh, TedHack channel as well? So I'm, I'm going to defer that to the, the Avaya team because uh, no they problem. Kind of their own plan. I, I will say that we're going to make sure that we're as available as possible. And so yeah. if I can get myself on the, the Riot chat system and, and, and learn how to use that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gladly be available to answer your questions. No problem. No, I understand. Yeah, it, it's, it's a web page. It's another web page you can use. Um, a question from Mike. Uh, when can we start creating our test accounts? So uh, th another nice thing about the, the Ring Central Avaya Cloud Office platform is it's an open platform. So you can create your test account anytime. You can log in today, uh, obviously adhere to the, the official rules of the hackathon uh, in terms of when you can start programming. Uh, but yeah, you, you can create an account today, tomorrow, uh, you know, a month from now. It, it will always remain open. Understood. And then a question from Leslie, who's based in the UK, is can we send SMS from one Avaya number to another Avaya number? Uh, today, SMS is not supported in the UK. Um, you, you could cheat and use a, a US number and then use the soft phone to you know, kind of validate that. Yep. Um, and you can also take advantage of the team messaging capabilities between you want to uh, buy a cloud office account and another buy a cloud office account. That's it. So you go clip or you just basically cheat it with soft phones. Yep. Yep. Perfect. That's excellent. Again, thank you so much, Mike. And for this morning, thank you so much for waking up so early. No, thank you for having me and, and everyone have a great hackathon. No, that's great. Okay, so let's move on. There was some great Q&A there. So, uh, Jared, uh, it's over to you now. Fantastic. Let me get my screen shared here. And I want to go full screen. There we go. Yep, perfect. Hello, everyone. Uh, over the next few minutes, we'll, uh, I just want to briefly talk about uh, what, uh, what SimWood is and uh, what some of the resources that we've got. Uh, oh, is my slides auto advancing? Uh, some of the uh, resources that we've got had for TadHack here. Um, some of you may know us uh, from years past, uh, you know, as kind of a voice over IP wholesaler that started in the UK. Um, but through growth and through acquisition, um, we've really grown over the last uh, several years to where we've got, you know, we, we kind of play a role as a network operator, a wholesaler, but we also now have a hosted uh, cloud PBX platform um, as, well, as well as a reseller program around that and are starting to get into some uh, kind of end user uh, products as well. Um, as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we started off in the UK, and so we've got a strong presence there with, with several points of presence there in the UK. But we've also expanded into the US with both an East Coast and a West Coast presence. And then we have a very small uh, point of presence in Singapore as well for our, our uh, Simwood Meet uh, platform. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide, which is just kind of a network map, but it kind of, uh, I just want to point out that that building resilient networks is kind of an, in our DNA. Um, we run our own fiber ring around London and then have, uh, you know, re redundant links to other points of presence in the UK. Um, I don't have our US map up here, but you, you can imagine same sort of thing, a, a very resilient network where there's no single point of failure. Um, we, we're not just reselling somebody else's network or reselling somebody else's service, uh, you know, you know, building a strong, resilient platform is, is in our DNA, and that's what we're aiming to do here. Um, in general, we kind of have two different uh, 
categories of products. The first is uh, is our wholesale stuff. Uh, if if any of you were uh, participating in Tad Hack last year, um, you probably would have played with our wholesale API, um, minutes and numbers and that sort of thing. Um, this year we've decided to mix it up a little bit and and do our our Tad Hack uh, resources around the partner platform. So it's uh, like I said, it's a hosted PBX in the cloud where you have access to extensions and voicemail and, and call routing and time of day routing and ring groups and queues and and whisper and barge and all those those, those sorts of features uh, backed up with an API. Um, so that's kind of what we're we're, we're focusing on this year. Um, so we'll have a web interface where you can go in and look at your dashboard and look at your, you know, set up extensions and ring groups, groups and IVR menus and those sorts of things. But we have got a full API behind that as well. So, um, and some client libraries to make that easier to interact with. Um, from a support standpoint, uh, we're going to use Slack again this year. Um, and you'll receive your Slack invitation just as soon as you register or soon after you register, since there's a little bit of a manual process on our side to, to set those up. Um, for registration this year, we're going to be using email. So simply email tadhack 2020 at com. We need your email address, your name, your team or company name, and a good contact number in case we need to get in touch with you. Uh, a couple of things to point out on these accounts that we're setting up for Tadhack. They, they are not intended to be for production use, although they are fully featured. Um, they do include some free calling credit. And if you need more calling credit, just simply reach out to us in the Slack channel and uh, we'd be happy to, to help you out there. Um, just be aware that these accounts will be removed after the event. Um, once we've processed your registration, we'll send you a set of credentials. You can use those same credentials for both the web interface at direct.simwood.com as well as through the APIs. Um, in the API documentation, uh, it points to an older uh, URL that we used, which was pbx.sipcentric.com. Um, we've recently uh, made it so that direct.simwood.com will work as well. I wanna, wanted to just reach reach out and share both of those a, you know, API URLs in case you see one or the other, they are the, they are the exact same platform. Uh, want to talk just very briefly about some common voice problems that people run into. We don't want people to get bogged down as they're, you know, with simple things as they're, as they're working on their projects. Uh, remember that uh, you will need to whitelist the, the proper IP addresses in your firewall or access control lists on your side. Um, if you see our documentation, uh, we'll provide a full list of the IP addresses and port ranges to, to open up so that, so that we can get both signaling and media uh, through to you. Um, also make sure you're using a proper caller ID value, especially for outbound calls. Um, due to regulations in the UK and elsewhere in the world, we, uh, we do need you to uh, give us a, a proper caller ID number for outbound calling. And then last but not least, uh, make sure you're using a compatible codec. Um, you know, G711 is kind of the, the, you know, the, the most commonly used codec and, and, and you know, most interoperable codec. So um, if you're trying something else, it may or may not work, depending on which, which part of our platform you're hitting, but the G711 should always work. Now let's talk about specifically about the, the documentation that we're providing. Um, we have uh, an API documentation site at developer.simwood.com slash direct where we list uh, you know, kind of how to get started, how to authenticate with the platform, a list of the rest endpoints that you can use, those sorts of things. Um, we also uh, provide some example code. There is a Node.js package uh, under the SIP-centric namespace called PBX client that you can use to, uh, to interact with the, with the platform. If you don't want to you know, use raw you know, REST API calls, you can use that, that Node.js uh, client library. Um, in that, there's an examples folder, and we have several, you know, fully fleshed out examples there, including a WebRTC soft phone. So if your uh, hack that you're working on involves building a, a soft phone, well, we've done 95% of the work there for you. Um, and there's a link directly to that on GitHub uh, at, the, at the bottom of the slide as well. And with that, I wish you all the best of luck in your hacking. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jared. That really covered all the uh, main points. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? I have to admit, it's exciting to see uh, the move from the wholesale API to uh, Simwood Direct. So we're really excited to see what uh, people can do 
with all those capabilities and again some great example code that you're providing to help people get up and running as fast as possible so again any questions from anybody in the audience if not jared that was excellent thank you so much thanks al oh sorry i just missed a uh, just hang on a sec um there was one um so there's a question from mike and he's asking, what's the core business of SimWood? What are the types of hacks that you're looking for? So our core business, like I said, is kind of split between, you know, being a, being a voice over IP wholesaler. So providing minutes and, and, and numbers and connectivity for, um, for smaller operations, as well as, you know, offering these, these more uh, you know, end user focused products and, you know, hosted PBX and, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so our core business is really helping people communicate, whether that's on the wholesale side or on the on the platform side. Um, what types of hacks are we looking for? We're looking for things that are, you know, interesting and new and 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 in different ways of doing things. If 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 your hack is, hey, I'm going to take take a number from SimWood and I'm going to use that to send an SMS. Well, we've probably seen that hack before. We would rather see something that that really uses the platform. So maybe use that that uh, WebRTC soft phone to do to, to do something interesting or do something interesting with dynamically provisioning extensions on on the cloud PBX or something interesting with a, a dynamic call center where you create, you know, call queues on the fly or something like that. You know, there's lots lots of uh, things that you can do on a, on, a, on a PBX platform that you couldn't necessarily do with just minutes and numbers and SMS. Perfect, excellent, Jared. Um, any other questions? If not, thank you so much. Let's move on to now, will it be Andrew or will it be uh, Calvin that'll be presented? You're getting Andrew today. Yay! So this afternoon you're getting Andrew, yep. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to introduce Andrew who will be presenting on the Avaya CPASS. Thank you, Alan. Oh, I better share my screen or else this would be a confusing presentation. Uh, I'd say it would be audio only. Yeah. Okay, can you see that? Yep. Perfect. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Sorrentitz. I'm with Avaya. I work as a digital transformation specialist. I work very closely with the Avaya OneCloud CPaaS APIs. Uh, you might be wondering, what does CPaaS mean? It means communication platform as a service. And the functionality we bring to the table is we're able to send SMS, receive SMS, similar with uh, multimedia messages. Um, and then you can also do things such as initiate calls, call control, and all, all of that that falls under that umbrella. Uh, the one thing that Avaya OneCloud CPaaS kind of focuses on is that it decouples the functionality from the contact center. Uh, if you've known Avaya, historically we've been focused on that. And now with the APIs that we have, it, you know, you don't need a contact center in the background, but um, if you do have a contact center you want to connect to, we, you know, we support SIP and all of that. So uh, there are ways to glue yourself into the environment. So that was just a little introduction about what CPaaS does as far as uh, functionality. And like I said, it's, uh, it's all in the cloud and you know, there are a number of different things you can do with it, whether you want to just create a, you know, a, a conference call, if you want to just initiate some sort of call because somebody clicked a button on a web page, you know, um, once you see the API methods, the, the real power is comes, you know, when you glue them together. Uh, for example, um, one of the, kind of things I've done for myself personally, is I have these IOT locks at my home and my grandparents don't have smartphones so they're not able to, you know, log onto the app and unlock the lock like I would want. So I set up a number on Avaya that they can call into and when they call into that number, they can either press one to unlock the door or two to lock it. But of course, I don't want just anybody calling that. So I have a little control where it looks up in a database and it checks to see if it's a valid number. And if it is a valid number, then it lets them control the lock. But you know, one very many use case that took about five minutes to build. Um, and you'd be surprised how that same code can be reused across many different use cases. And 
just because I, you know, started talking about some of the use cases that come out about this. Now with the pandemic going around, one of the very popular ones is curbside pickup. Uh, curbside pickup really leverages the whole, you know, two way back and forth between the business and the client. So whether that's voice or SMS, that's used heavily now in many different uh, businesses in order to, you know, get the product in the hands of the customer in a safe manner. Uh, however, there are many other use cases such as emergency alerts. So something terrible has happened where, uh, you know, somebody hits a big red button on a wall to alert everyone else. And then, you know, thousands of text messages could be sent out to a list of people. So, um, you know, that code that would send out the emergency text messages, you know, you could use that for many other things as well. But one of the highlights of there is, or one of the popular use cases I've seen is the emergency use case where something happened, we need to let everyone know. And the, the one other really main point that Avaya has been focusing on is using a combination of these CPAS APIs with some sort of bot. Uh, when I say bot, I, you know, any kind of chat bot, the one that's really popular today is Dialogflow. And what Avaya does have today in place is a one-click integration to say, hey, you have a number from us. If you click this button over here, we can uh, piece it together with your Dialogflow project. And, you know, within minutes, you have an automated agent. So it's really powerful. And, you know, I believe, Alan, I'm not sure if you remember, but we, I was at a hackathon out in Phoenix um, out earlier in February, and this is kind of one of the things that was on the horizon, and even one of the, the hackers there kind of built, you know, a, a rough version of that. So, um, you know, now we have that, and it's moving forward. And I, you know, I just talked about some of the use cases that you can build out with these APIs. A lot of them just revolve around messaging, recording, transcription, and voice. But like I said, if need be, there are SIP integrations. So now I'll show you where, you know, you would go to actually sign up. So I already have my account, but if you do not, you would click this sign up button. Uh, and then you would sign up for the account. And one important thing, and I'll flash it up again at the end of the presentation, is that once you create the account, you have to uh, make a request to CPAS support at avaya.com and request production access. And hopefully if you can do this before the hackathon, that would be great to prevent any speed bumps to make sure that you can have as much fun in the little sandbox that you can. And like I said, at the end, I'll flash that uh, email address on the screen. So at this point, I'll show you what it looks like after you sign in. This would be the, the dashboard you're presented with. If you see here, it has the account SID as well as the auth token. Uh, those are used as your authentication parameters in our REST API. Uh, so I'll show you in a just a real little bit that you know Avaya CPaaS has a combination of REST APIs and inbound XML APIs, where inbound is used for inbound interactions primarily, uh, and REST is used for if you want to initiate something or create an outbound request. Now from this point, I'll show how would you actually buy a number? Well, uh, the one thing I will touch on is because it was talked about with the Ring Central portion, uh, we talked about having a, a finite amount of minutes or so forth with Avaya. There are just dollars that are put into the account and typically you would have to put those in, but I believe we are giving free credits so, you know, you won't have to worry about that. And, you know, all the, the messaging and voice is fairly cheap anyway, but that is how that funding is done. Uh, you know, you don't run out of minutes, you don't run out of messages. It all comes down to the dollars in the account. And with those dollars in the account, you could buy a phone number. So if I just go up here, numbers, buy a phone number. And I can just search for one now, but if you look over here, there is a list of countries that, you know, you, that you can pick from the drop down, and then Avaya would know to search through, you know, that country's available numbers. So what I'll do, I'll search for one here.
and I'll take this 3020172. So I'll just take this number, I would click buy. And now I've successfully bought and added the number to my account. You can name it whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really have much to do with it. But if you see down here, we now have these voice request URLs, uh, SMS request URLs, and MMS request URLs. What this is basically saying is Avaya is asking you, okay, for voice, anytime somebody calls this number, we are going to make a post request to this uh, voice request URL for further call processing. And at this point, you would want to have, make sure you have an endpoint uh, configured so that when Avaya sends that call to that endpoint that, you know, you can formulate the proper response and continue with the call processing. The same thing happens with SMS. So when an SMS is sent, where should Avaya send the request to? And this might be a, a little cryptic now because I didn't explain how you would respond to one of these requests. But um, I just wanted to show you, this is where you tell Avaya, all right, I have this number, any request that comes through, send it to here. And at this point, I'm going to actually put in this link for the SMS. I configure just a small application that whatever you send to it, it sends right back to you. Uh, but before I get into that, I wanted to show you that, you know, for these voice and SMS request URLs, it expects an XML response. Uh, so there's a bunch of documentation on Avaya's inbound XML. And if you see, I'll go down to the SMS one. So when that request goes to that URL, it expects a response that looks something like this for an SMS. And if you look over here, you know, it has the, the from equals that number and then two equals whoever. And in the middle of the uh, low angle brackets, it says, you know, this is the body of the message. So for a simple SMS, that is something that would be formulated. Uh, now, obviously with voice, it gets more complicated. There are things, if you want to create your own IVR, um, you know, there are gather elements, so you can say, all right, uh, I want the user to either press one or say a certain word. And this tells the, uh, the application that you, you're going to be picking up some sort of DTMF or speech input, and then you can respond. And I won't go through all this because this could probably take well over an hour. I just wanted to touch on a base of it. And the, the one thing I'll say about this is it doesn't say it here, but you do have libraries in PHP, Java, Node, .NET, Python, and Go. And what, you know, this is really nice because obviously you don't want to have to create all that XML all by yourself. It's much e easier with helper libraries. And that's one of the things Avaya provides. So uh, the next portion I'll show you is the REST API. And with this, you know, it, it just talks about here's a base endpoint authentication. Like I said, the authentication requires the initial account SID and auth token that are on this screen. Okay, Andrew, just to give you a two minute warning, okay? Yep, uh, I'm on the road. Uh, so from here, you're able to, you know, make calls, list calls, uh, send digits to calls, and, you know, do all the things that you want to do for call control as well as list and uh, send SMSs. So, you know, you can intercept and create all sorts of um, really powerful applications via the REST APIs. And I just wanted to show you the one other thing we have. If you go to this developers API Explorer, it will take you to here if you want to actually test out our APIs. Uh, and then from here, you could, you know, send in a number and if you want to send an SMS, you know, now it will make the request and boom, it, this is the response that Avaya gives back. So, um, and the, the one other thing I will touch on is Avaya is the carrier. So you're able to pass in a number and you're able to tell things like the address of the number or whether it's mobile or not. So you want to, might want to create a different experience. So I know that was more technical than maybe some of the other presentations. Um, 
but I just wanted to try and give the lay of the land for what uh, Avaya has to offer from the CPAS point of view. And if you have any questions, please reach out. And I will promise this. So please reach out to the CPAS support at avaya.com and request production access before the hackathon. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andrew. Do we have any questions from the audience? And add it into the chat if you like. If not, because of time, again, thank you, Andrew. What I'd like to do now is to ask the Intellipia team if you can come on down and uh, share your screen, please. All right. Uh, can everybody see my screen? All right. Yep. All right. First of all, uh, my name is Adam Kladner. I'm the Vice President of Applications Development here at Intellipia. Uh, for those of you who don't know Intellipeer, um, we're a cloud communi communications company, um, and our, our flagship product is Atmosphere CPaaS, which is really a collection of products. Um, we have smart flows, which I'm going to show you today and, and what you'll use in the TAD hack. Uh, we have Engage, which is an outbound um, campaign manager. Um, we have Insights, which is our data analytics that collects all the data that comes out of those two products. Uh, and then we have um, just we have APIs that can run out the whole thing. So what I want to do right now, I'm going to take you through a quick PowerPoint to show you how to get to us for the for the TAD hack. Um, and then I'm actually going to give you a little tour of smart flows. So what we're going to do, um, this site will be available come October 9th, um, right around midnight. You guys will get a token that you'll ver you'll validate and it'll take you through a registration process. You'll populate this information. You put a valid email in so you get a, a verification code. Once you've verified, you're in. You, get a, you automatically get assigned a phone number for use. Um, you'll also put in a number that you wanna test against. So that way you can do it as many times as you want. Um, and you can just you can play with that number. So this is where you'll end up when you're finished with the registration process. We have some quick links to different um, different guides that will help you through this. But this is where you're basically going to live. Um, I'll take you just through some of this main menu. So these are these will be the flows that you've created. Um, just some later to let you know if your flow is actually deployed. You have a number linked to it. And if you want to share it with anybody, um, you can keep it to yourself or you can share it with um, my team who will be on for support. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then you just, if you want to like copy or duplicate a flow, you can do that here as well. Um, from here, you also have an audio library. So if you're making um, if you're making a flow that involves calls, you can actually load pre-recorded audio and then use that in your flow. Um, on this assignment screen, this is where you'll actually assign a flow to your number that you got. So you can use that same number for in for inbound voice or SMS, um, and then. So you can, again, same number, do a functionality. What we have here is um, a template library. And basically, it's kind of like use cases that we've come, we've come across uh, over the years. Um, so we actually built them as little starters, right? We have a two-factor authentication one if you want to kind of play with that. Um, so I, I really recommend checking these out. It'll give you a good feel of, of what's possible. Um, you guys won't have these because I'm an admin, so I have these. Sorry about that, it's a tease. So let me go back to my flows. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create one. So now we're in the canvas of SmartFlow. And what we have here is every, every flow has got to start with a trigger. So basically you're saying, hey, this flow is going to start with an inbound call or a text or Facebook Messenger, or inbound API. Um, one thing I will tell you 
just given the limitations of what it takes to get a WhatsApp number approved for business use, it takes like two weeks to do it. So unfortunately, WhatsApp won't be available to you, but always feel free to come back, talk to us about it, um, and we'll see what, what, you know, we can answer your questions on that. Um, and then from there, you can just, you have all these different interactions, right? You, got, you have your voice, you have messaging options, your flow logic, right? So you can do your switches, regex, regional routing, that sort of thing. <clears throat> you also have call recording. So if you want to call, record that whole session, you have access to that. We have um, direct connections to Watson Assistant and Lex. Um, I'm also going to tell you about um, external web calls, so how you can actually hook to anything. But um, let me kind of finish up with this one. Hang on, I think I made my screen too small. Uh, and then we have natural language processing, right? So we can do speech recognition, tonality, detect language, that sort of thing. So let me just build a real simple flow right now. Um, I'm going to say inbound text. Um, maybe I want to detect the language, right? Because at IntelliPeer, we, we've started expanding internationally. And we obviously, you can't put, you can't just hire um, someone who speaks every language in the world. So using something like this helps us out. So what we can do, each one of these boxes consumes or produces variables. Okay. So this SMS one, I drop in here, I hit save, and that's it. Now I, I'm able to detect the language of that message that came in. From there, I could do things like, um, let me drop that switch on. I can add a switch to say, Hang on. Sorry about that. If this detect language equals EN, I can just go ahead and pass that message on as is. I don't have to do any translation to it. So I drop that in. I could put it. I could put that number in here that I want to receive the text, and it'll come from the number that you assign to this flow. Otherwise, if it's not English, I can actually use the translate function, and it's it'll be. Uh, let me make sure I got this. It'll be the source language, and I want to translate it to EN. And then I drop the SMS back on, and I send it. I send that back out. And this time, it's the translation. Okay. So you saw within like less than a minute, I've got it. I've got um, language translation built in SMS. So it gets really powerful when you do those kind of things. Um, but I will tell you two of my favorite um, options in SmartFlows is the inbound API and the external web call. So inbound API is a trigger, which means any system that, ha that can call an API can call a SmartFlow that you build and then do things to. So, you know, think about all our sponsors here, right? We've been talking about APIs. There's a really good opportunity, and I'm going to use Alan's word uh, to do a mashup of the technologies to really make something special in your application. Um, likewise, external web call, anything that has an API accessible, you can call it and use it and use its variables. So, you know, that's where you can tap into different chatbots, different CRMs. Uh, you name it. If it has an API, you can hit it and get information from it. 
all right? So that's the nickel tool. Um, and I'll bring you back over to the PowerPoint and pull up some resources to get you started. Um, as we did last year, uh, we're gonna have a Slack channel open. So you'll have access to myself, Cora, and uh, Nelson. Um, and uh, I just said, we, we had a lot of fun last year. We saw some really cool um, uses of smart flows, things that we hadn't even seen before. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what will happen this year. Um, Cora, Nelson, if you guys got anything you want to add? Mm, I'm good. <laughs> you, you cover everything. All right. All right, and Cora, I'll take your silences. You got, you got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that All was right. great, Adam. Excellent job. Do we have any questions from the audience on the Intellipia resources? Again, great GUI there. And Adam said the magic words, mash up, mash up, mash up. It increases your chances of winning quite dramatically. Uh, and also just shows how cool it is to be able to reuse all the different sponsors' capabilities. So with that then, Again, thank you so much, Adam. I would now like to hand over <clears throat> to the symbol.ai team. So Charlie, are you there? I can see you're on the call. Oh, there you go. I think it's just you're on mute. Yep, you're on sure. mute. Yeah, yep. I said, uh, there you go. I was a little screen. Let me see if I can hide this. Hey guys, uh, my name is Charlie Beckwith and I'm with Symbol.ai. We're super excited to be here uh, sponsoring TADAX 2020 and I'm excited to introduce you to our comprehensive suite of APIs for conversational analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Charlie Beckwith because I'll be posting how-to videos this week that might give you an ideas, ideas about what to do with your hackathon projects. Let's get started. So Symbol, allows you to analyze naturally flowing conversation, both asynchronously or in real time, and will automatically detect and surface relevant and actionable data points without needing to rely on any limiting wake words or upfront training of models. We have use cases in sales, education, call centers, but for this hackathon, we'd really love for you all to think outside of the box and get creative. And as Alan just mentioned, mash up with other technologies that are being featured here for TADHacks. So as I already mentioned, conversation can be ingested through our real-time uh, APIs, both telephony and WebSockets. So you can use a SIP or PSTN endpoint or our WebSockets adapters that already integrate with some of the most popular video chat platforms. Or you can send pre-existing video calls, text, or audio to our async APIs um, from any source, so either you know, email chat or transcripts. One of the coolest features of this is that you can actually append conversation. You can have a conversation that spans through multiple audio calls, email chains, or even video calls, and have it all in one place where you can easily see what you know, went on during that conversation and uh, not have to split it up. So once analyzed, Symbol generates insights from the conversation, like topics, action items, questions, follow-ups, and more, as well as a full speaker diarized transcript of the conversation. How you choose to handle the insights Symbol populates is where all of you participating in Hat Hacks come in. And I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with. For each conversation analyzed, there's a meeting summary UI that uh, will be created. And this is a really great place to play around with all of the different insights that Symbol generates. As you can see on the left, there are the topics that were talked about in the conversation, and you can click on those and they will uh, jump directly to the place in the transcript where that uh, topic was mentioned. Um, on the right side of, this, of the, the page here, we have our action items, and that's uh, where you know, actionables like take in. So if you can see under Mark Suster, he's saying uh, you take the person that he's going to take the person uh, with the best fit. And if you click on that, it'll just hop directly over to that point in the video. Uh, soon we'll have some, soon we'll have a, an elements package. So uh, that will be on our GitHub repo. 
uh, as I was speaking earlier and what I would love to see from you guys is, you know, experiences that you can create through our insights. So again, uh, from voice, video or text, any source, you can pass it using our REST APIs and then choose to handle it in whatever way that you seem fit. So you could have one phrase trigger something in Slack that would you know, notify you that something happened um, in a conversation that needs to be followed up on or um, really, really anything. The, the sky's the limit kind of here with, with this um, since it's just a, a REST API. It's not anything complicated that needs to be installed. Um, and there's no model training that you guys have to do. It's just uh, data that gets fed back and you can play around with. Getting started is very easy and there's no credit card required. Simply go to symbol.ai. In the upper right hand corner, there is a sign up link. Enter your name, email address, and password and click sign up. And you'll be given 100 free minutes as well as 1,000 free words. Um, however, you can get your TADHAC credits, extra TADHAC credits early by emailing us at tadhack at symbol.ai. And also, feel free to join our development, uh, developer community on Slack. Once registered, you can head over to the dashboard um, by logging in and retrieve your API credentials, which, you should, which then uh, you can plug into uh, the API calls that you'll be making. Head over to our, our documentation section by going back to our homepage and heading to the resources tab and clicking on documentation. There, you can, add, you can uh, see our Postman collection and add that. If you're not familiar with Postman, it is a super useful tool that allows you to make REST API calls without having to, without having to, do, without having to program anything. You just uh, plug in your API credentials and the, then you can get started right away. We have a few GitHub repos with some example applications for, uh, again, some of the most popular video chat platforms, including Twilio, Chime, and Agora. There's an application on the right uh, with uh, messages and transcripts and insights on the left here. This is all being pulled in from real time, a real time video chat. Um, and this is an application that you can actually deploy yourself. It is uh, the Amazon Chime demo application. Um, I wanted to be succinct, so if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to raise them now. And I'd like to thank you. And please follow both myself, at Charlie Beckwith, and um, Symbol, at Symbol.ai, on Twitter for more information coming this week um, as we prepare for Tad Hacks. So excellent. Thank you so much, Charlie. That was excellent. We have a question from Nick. Um, for the video injection, on symbol.ai. Is it just processing the audio or is there a taxonomy that we get from the video itself too? So right now it is only uh, audio. So the video, uh, the audio gets from that. Yep, no problem. That's, that's an interesting problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that you know, like not from somebody, I, I don't know who, but yep, you know, no problem. Okay, cool. So uh, any other questions from the audience? If not, thank you so much, Charlie. Right, thank you guys. Great, so that's it. Uh, we got through that. Excellent questions. Thanks so much for that. Uh, you've got, I'm gonna get these um, chopped up and published as well. We've already got the web log up with the videos from this morning. I'm just gonna get the uh, ones from this afternoon done as well. It's got all the links in there. We will be updating the, um, uh, I know some of the resources on the TATAC site are out of date given to the presentations you've seen today. They will get updated, hopefully within the next 24 hours. So just bear with us, but we've got the content here. Uh, I'm also getting the presentations that were given, uh, some of those uploaded as well onto the web log. So hopefully that'll enable you to get going and again, got any questions you've got lots of options in terms of uh, hassling people i'm always uh, on the uh, well now i am anyway 
on the uh, TADAC riot. So you can always uh, chat and hassle me there. You can see we've already had quite a few conversations going across a number of the uh, groups in there. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time. Excellent discussions. And I'm really looking forward to what we see over the 10th and the 11th of October. So uh, best wishes, and I'll speak to everybody soon. Bye-bye.